morning everybody and welcome to the video let's learn and build a very simple graphql api using aws app sync which is powered by dynamodb backend let's learn how to create mutation let's learn how to query this data with a very simple demo so let's get started i'm not gonna go into theory uh, but i will go into a practical lab session so let's create our very first app sync or graphql api we'll click on start right and uh, here we are building the following scenario. Here we have a user which has several product, product name and the price, right? So my access patterns are for a given user, I want to fetch all the products. For a product, I want to see who are the user who uh, essentially purchased that uh, product. Um, so yeah, so let's um, build uh, this, right? Um, so as you can see, my, my basic PK and SK is going to be my user ID and product ID. So here I can say for a, for a user, fetch me all the product. And I could also use the sort key to filter from the product. Or if I want to get the user for a given product, I'm going to set up a global secondary index. And if you don't know what global secondary index is, I have a two hour and 36 minute course on DynamoDB. Uh, please go and watch. This will clear all your concepts on DynamoDB. So I'll be setting up a GSI, which will be my, so I'll set up this as PK and this as SK, right? So now I can query my data saying that, hey, for a given product, give me all the users, right? So let's let's learn all these uh, now in action. So we're gonna call this as user product, model name is user product. Uh, here we'll define the field, so we'll say user ID, okay? Then here we will say, uh, I have my code snippets here, which I will be sharing at the end of the video. So product ID, which will be also a string, product name, also a string, and then the finally uh, product price, okay? So these are my stuff that I wanna add, right? Uh, now we'll click on the configure section and here we'll set up a GSI. So I wanna query also for a given product, give me all the users, right? So I wanna do that. So hence I'll be setting up, setting up a global secondary index. Additional, we'll click on add index and here we want to add a sort key as well. So we'll use a product ID as a sort key and here I'm setting my global secondary index. So my product ID is my PK and uh, user ID is going to be my SK and we'll click on the orange button that says create. So we'll call this um, user product API and we'll click on the orange button which says create. Now this is gonna create our GraphQL API. I'll also show you how to query that in Python. So do not worry at all. Uh, this might take a second or two, again, depending upon uh, the configurations, right? <laughs> so let's, let, let's, let's be patient. What this will also do is this will also populate a DynamoDB table. As you can see, it made a DynamoDB table for me, right? As you can see, right? Uh, hopefully the vis wizard should be complete shortly. Again, the Dynamo uh, uh, DB table has also been created and sh uh, soon this should be ready for me to use, okay? So let's wait. I'm still waiting for the wizard to complete. Meanwhile, that is happening. I'll be basically demonstrating you all the basic CRUD operation, create, update, delete, and I guess my, um, what'd you say, the wizard is complete. Now let's create a first product, right? So the, how does that work? Basically, now we are doing a CRUD operation, basically mutation. So we are saying mutation, create user product. There will be uh, your create user product, right? And uh, then we are basically giving a variable here as an input. Right, and then we are defining the query parameter here, user ID, product, product name, blah, 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 right? So that's essentially creating a product, right? So now let's try this out. Um, so what we will do, again, if you observe, this has already given me a predefined scaffold here, we'll remove the list one, because I'll demonstrate you in the next part. So here we have a very basic scaffold, right? So let's do that. And here I'll define my JSON, which I already have. Let's go back. All right, so now uh, let me correct the spelling mistake here. User input, okay. Uh, hold on, I have a colon here. All right, so now let's click on the orange button and congratulations, you have just inserted the data into the DynamoDB table. So we'll uh, show you that. So we'll click on explore here. 
And again, if you want to watch, please watch my DynamoDB uh, two hours course. Uh, that, that should essentially tell you every single thing that I'm talking about. So here you can see I have a simple product that was inserted using a GraphQL API, right? Now let's let's learn something else, right? Like basically we learned how to create an item, right? Now let's learn how to update an item, right? So we'll remove everything here. Now you can click here and then oh, I don't want a query, I want a mutation. So I'll click on mutation and then I'll click on the plus icon and I want to essentially update an item. So see pretty much I'm just uh, dragging and dropping items here, right? So now I will come down. I'll paste it here so you guys can see what the query was. Now here you can see I can say my product one, my user, oops, my product ID one uh, and my user ID one. My product name, I want to change this to Python super advanced and I want to change the price to let's say $3,000 right so again if you go to back to my DynamoDB here we have 2000 we are simply updating this right so now we'll copy this mutation and then I'll go to the GraphQL and I will simply paste it here and try my best to zoom in and sure enough now my product has been updated if I go back to my Dynamo and here you can see the price and the product has been updated. Pretty easy, right? So, so, so easy, right? Now, the last thing that I want to teach you, of course, you can use similarly do the delete operation. I want to show the query operation, right? So for example, let's say I want to get a product. So I want to get a product one, user one, right? And I want to get all these columns, right? So I can uh, run this and I can get all the data here. So say on your front end, you're using something called product ID. So the key name is different. Since it's GraphQL, you can rename the keys on the fly. That's the beauty of GraphQL, right? So now, as you see how easy it is to write queries, right? Uh, similarly, you can also do a list operation here. You can say, you can grab all the data right here, right? You can say limit query, how much data you wanna get back. And here you can see I'm getting a single item. If there are more items, it will give you a token, right? It's pretty intuitive, right? It's very, very intuitive and easy. Um, now what I want to show you is how do I query this using Python, right? So hopefully people want to know how do we use GraphQL in Python. So we have a class called AppSync, which I have taken from Stack Overflow. Uh, I'll try to put the reference from where I took. I don't have it handy, I guess. Oh, here. Uh, I guess this was the one. Yeah. So this is the where I copied the code from, right? Uh, hopefully you guys can see. That's my reference, right? This is where I have got this class from while well, I was searching. <laughs> so I'll leave the resources, but now let's learn how to query this. So we head over to the settings sections, right? Now we copy the API URL, and then I will go to the ENV section and simply replace the ENV variable. So here you can see I did replace that, right? Now I'll copy the API keys, which is on the bottom section, copy and paste. Now let's um, basically get the data, right? So uh, what I will do to uh, demonstrate, uh, I'll use a very simple query though. Uh, so here, this query returns some data, right? So I'll copy this and I'll try to show you by running this in the Python, right? So here I'll be putting my query. Uh, I can indent that a little bit. Okay, so now if I run this Python code, right? I should see the data back in my Python. So there you go, guys, you have the data, right? So what you have learned in this short video and presentation is basically A, uh, let my, waiting for my video. All right, looks like my video, uh, okay, yeah, we're back. So what we learned in this is basically how rapidly you can make GraphQL APIs hosted on AWS, uh, powered by, you know, most powerful, you know, DynamoDB, right? Query the data, insert, update, delete. Uh, you know, you could do all these operations, right? Uh, it has caching and subscription and all these stuff are also there, which we will explore further. But I hope you got a very nice idea about uh, GraphQL, AppSync, DynamoDB. Uh, I'll leave the Python code snippets in the description. So if you wanna try this lab, go ahead, try the code out and then make sure to delete the resource when done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying all these amazing contents on AWS. And if you do so, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.